if you take nothing else away from this session, remember these things. So if you want to take a picture or do something of that nature, write it down. This is what we're trying to solve when we built this, this feature of Blueprint uh, course. Um, you know, our students, they need a better experience when they move from course to course. They need more consistency to help them navigate through the, the technology and through your classes. Um, we need easier course creation for our teachers. You know, it's, it's terrible when you, have to, when you feel like you're on your own for everything and you have to start from scratch every time. And distribution and updates to courses at scale. This is um, a hard problem in the educational world. So we're gonna talk about how we can maybe help solve some of that pain. And assurance that the content and activities that you planned so hard to cultivate are actually being used inside the classroom. Okay, so let's tackle the first one. Consistent student experience. I'm gonna move off the stage. Sorry if you can't see me towards the back. Um, Okay, I mentioned I'm a, I'm a parent. I've got two students that are, one is in high school, one is in junior high. I actually logged into their classes and took the home page from a handful of their courses and we're gonna talk about those real quick. And I, this is where I need your participation. You guys are gonna tell me if this is a good user experience for a student or if it's lacking or maybe some of the things that we could do to improve upon this. So you'll notice on the left-hand side, um, I'm in the teacher view right here. So the students wouldn't necessarily see all of those navigational items, the, grade, the ones that are grayed out, they would not see. So I'm gonna turn it over to you for a second. Is this a good user experience for a student? Is it bad? What could be improved upon? Hands, volunteers? Okay, the comment there was, um, she's linking out to a Google uh, calendar instead of the Canvas calendar, so it's kind of decentralizing where students are going. Uh, back here, hand. Okay, so, the comment here, here was, if this was an online course and I was a student who had never taken one, it might be kind of hard for me to get started and figure out where to go next. Great comment, let's go Blue Jacket right here. Okay, um, she's having them go to pages, which is very confusing for students because it's in alphabetical order and they really need to look at modules and, and they need to go to the modules first. I always hide pages and files because of how they're ordered, it doesn't make any sense for the students. All right, so the comment there was, um, I've got my own spy tech here I'm gonna use. All right, so um, she's using pages in this example where pages could be confusing to a student because they are listed alphabetically when you navigate over to the pages. Um, her suggestion would be to uh, more fully utilize the modules view and maybe hide the navigation to the pages and maybe some of these other things on the side like files. So that's all of the time we're gonna spend on this one. We've got a couple more to go through. Um, my insights to this are, are uh, fairly well in line with what you guys are saying. Um, I do like the fact that she is grounding the students uh, where they can go for critical information throughout the, the course. There is the calendar, even though it's decentralized. Um, there's a course outline, there's textbook, there's the, uh, um, the calculator they're gonna need to use for this course. Not bad, I wouldn't say this is stellar, but this is not, not horrible, I've seen much worse. <laughs> and it says welcome, yes. Okay, this is another one. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many comments I'm gonna take on this one, but um, th this is what we're gonna talk about. Um, notice how on the left-hand navigation right here, there's so much stuff that the students can click into. Um, in theory, you know, the recent activity would start filling up with some of the things that are happening inside the class, but it doesn't orient a student to where they go next, when they should go to where, uh, without that teacher telling them and retelling them and retelling them uh, what to do. And then when they get home and they forgot what the teacher said, they're screwed. <laughs> so um, that's this course. Let's, uh, let's look at this one. 
Any quick thoughts here? What's that? Use of pictures is good. Back in the back, hand. Somebody learned on WebCT. <laughs> no comment, okay. Um, again, this is not horrible, I've seen worse. Uh, but left-hand nav, again, you know, linking to pages, to syllabus. I mean, if you're giving a lot of information here, do you need all of this, and is this helpful or confusing? Okay. Okay, here we go. Comments about this one. <laughs> Besides the fact that it's not published. Course resources at the top, nothing in it. Okay, good observation. Well, okay. So, quick disclaimer. I copied this course and brought it over to my instance. I did not publish things, and I actually re removed a few things because there, there was a ton here. Right here, comment. The names of the elements in the text that you have. Okay, the naming conventions of the activities don't really make a lot of sense. Screen reader uh, might not be descriptive enough based on the, um, the titles here. Um, what about as far as a workflow? Does the student know where to, where to go, where to start? What's that? Start at the top of the modules, yeah. Sure, so maybe in the course resources, have some descriptive information about the course, those helpful guides, that sort of thing. Okay, an overview that tells what the section or module is going to be about. So maybe instead of starting with chapter one, lesson one, we start with the welcome page and uh, course information, uh, guides, that sort of thing. Great insights, you guys. What about this one? It's a, it's a pretty picture, right? <laughs> I have nowhere to go. Uh, I have no idea where I should be inside the course if I'm a student. Um, so th this, is, this is the reality of what our students face inside of our uh, institutions, whether it's K-12 or higher ed. I've seen it horrible in both places. I've seen it fantastic in both places. Um, we need to do better for our people. So um, let's move into easier course creation. So uh, teachers, I'm talking to you in this section. Um, uh, instructional designers, I'm talking to you. Teachers, who has started their semester um, like this, where you get a blank course shell and you say, good luck, high five, yeah. <laughs> Anybody had this experience? Is this where you like to start? Yes, I hear yes. Let's hear some no's. Um, give me some thoughts, where would you like to start? Right here. Okay, he said when, uh, if they've already made a class that I like, I would duplicate that and bring content over, shift it around. Uh, who's they? No, no, if I've made a class. If you, I've made. okay. So individually, if the teacher has made a class, they can bring it over. Back here in the back. Okay. So the suggestion here is inside of a department, for example, um, say English, it would be helpful if all of those English teachers had a common place to start from. All of the tools that were, they were expected to use, all of those resources, why does each teacher need to reinvent the wheel and bring those into their course and structure them in meaningful ways? Great observation. Anything else? Okay, let's move on. So what if, here we go guys, what if, in a magical world, as a teacher and as a student, this was your first day. It's not groundbreaking stuff here, right? It's minimized navigation on the left-hand side. There's not a lot going on. It's very simple to orient myself. Um, this isn't even real text. Add a, a short introductory or a welcome message in this spot. So this is the template that could be pushed out to everybody in the science department to start here. 
Um, now this is just the front page. We'll, we'll dive into maybe the course template and what could be included in that course template for your, uh, your courses. Um, but man, this is a much better experience as a student and a teacher. Um, all right, I'm gonna go to the podium because this is the live demo part. Put away my cool gadget laser pointer. Um, the two bullets that we haven't covered are distribution and updates and assurance of content. We'll cover that during the live demo portion. All right. Man, this elevation is no joke, right? Anybody else sucking wind this week? Woo. <laughs> okay, let's switch over. All right, here's my Canvas account. I'm gonna go into my Blueprint course. Um, actually, before I do that, am I even connected to the internet? It says I am. I'm distrustful. Let me do this. Okay. All right. We got it. Um, I'm going to back up. One, well, no, no, I'm not. I'm not going to chance the internet gods not working for me. So great. Okay. So here's that course that we just talked about. Uh, I did include modules since that screenshot. Since this is a modular-based course, if we look right here, here's a link to my modules page. Um, here's my about page as a teacher. Here's my class overview. So these are all pages that have been created, templatized for me, where I can just go fill in that information and orient my students to where they need to go. So I'm gonna look inside of this, inside this course. Um, any course inside of your Canvas account can be a blueprint course. So if an instructional, instructional designer creates a new course, all they need to do is come into settings, and this is, internet is killing me. I don't know what the deal is. Any tech guys back there? Want to help me out? <laughs> Wait, should I reset, reboot? <laughs> yeah. All right, you know, I'm gonna unplug the, the hard wire. That might be messing with it. All right, I'm gonna do that. Okay, that helped, thanks. <laughs> See what kind of uh, signal strength I'm getting on my phone. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try tethering from my phone. That might work. All right, let's try this again. All right, my phone works. Yay, technology, okay. So let's go into settings of this course. Let's say this is a brand new course that I've created. Ignore the fact that it already is a Blueprint course. Um, and we're gonna look how to set up a course as a Blueprint course. Okay, if I go to the course details, you'll notice I've got this checkbox right here that says Blueprint course. Now this does need to be enabled right now. It's behind a feature flag, as you know, uh, how we do at Instructure. We don't like to disrupt what you're doing today without any notice, right? So we've put this behind a, an account level feature flag where your admins can go turn this on and make this available to you. And once they do that, um, you can enable your course as a blueprint course. We're gonna ignore the things underneath it for just a minute and uh, go through the course itself. So back to my home page. I'm a I am somebody with access to the Blueprint course. Now this can be, it is a permission inside of Canvas at this point. So uh, if you have a role, say instructional designer, um, you can be added to that permission set to say you have the ability to uh, modify Blueprint courses. Um, you can also have access to a Blueprint course to modify the Blueprint course if you are invited to this course as a teacher. 
So let's say, for example, you're, um, you work within the English department, and you are the head honcho teacher at that English department, and you've been authorized to make changes to the curriculum um, or uh, the course structure and deploy that out to all of your peers. Um, you'd be enrolled in this course as a, as a uh, teacher. You could make modifications and distribute those. Um, you wouldn't have access, however, to change which courses are associated to this course. So you'd just be for this one course, you have blueprint access, whereas the permission, you can change any of the blueprint courses within your account structure, if that makes sense. Um, and happy to answer questions uh, as we go around that. Okay, I've enabled this as a blueprint course. I go into modules. Let's take a look at something that's different and noticeable right off the bat. So inside the modules page, um, as this loads, you see there's an extra icon in that far right hand side um, that indicates this is a blueprint item. Now since I'm in the blueprint course, all of my items will be blueprint icon iconized, um, but when I get into the classroom level course, only things that were pushed down from the blueprint course will have that icon. So um, now you'll notice here, I'm not having my teachers start from, from scratch, from nowhere. I've got school policies, I've got school resources, I've got orientation. Maybe this is a requirement that I need all of my teachers to have inside of their course. So with blueprint courses, I do have the capability of making sure some of these objects stay intact and part of the course. I can lock this into the course. So these fast internets are super awesome. But I've locked these resource pieces into the course. So now the students, uh, I'm, I'm making sure the students have access to this regardless of who their teacher is. Question here. Okay, yeah, so the question here, which we will get to in the workflow, but the question here was, um, if I'm a teacher, an adjunct, adjunct teacher, or a teacher inside of a course, the classroom level course, and I've already made changes to my course, and all of a sudden the blueprint tries to copy down over to my course, is it gonna replace my stuff? And the answer is, it depends. So if it's stuff that you've created, absolutely not. There's no association there. If it's um, stuff that has been left unlocked, meaning it can be modified by the instructor once it hits the classroom, uh, this is primarily a templating tool. I don't anticipate uh, the majority of the content in here would be locked as it's distributed in most cases. Um, those are editable. So inside the classroom you can make an edit, and if it's edited on the blueprint side and redistributed, it's not gonna overwrite what you've done inside of your, inside of your course. We're assuming you have what you need in your course to be successful because you did it, right? You know your, your class. Um, we're not gonna replace that. There's a couple hands back here. Great question. Okay, so the question was, how do I, as a teacher, know that this blueprint course exists, and how do I get access and participate? Um, and Commons was brought up. Uh, let, me, let me quickly talk about the difference. They, they both have their place, and they're both extremely useful. Commons is the content shopping experience, right? This is where I'm going to cultivate and curate and build my course with materials that are meaningful to that class. Um, that's building a course. This is uh, distributing to all of my teachers for a starting point. So I could be the recipient of a blueprint course copy um, and still need to go out to Commons and pull information down. But one is administrative kind of distribution, making sure that everybody has this same content. Uh, the other is how do I shop and find content inside of Commons. So um, the other part to that question, how do you get access? Well. I would, I would submit that most teachers probably won't be inside the blueprint course itself. Uh, in most cases, there will be definitely some use cases where that is true, but um, this is for 
our instructional designers, our administrative body to uh, start putting the building blocks together for that classroom. It may have zero content in it. It may just be the navigational elements along the left-hand side and maybe some resource material. And that might be it, and that's distributed out to the, to the teachers. Questions right here first. So if you're in the classroom, recipient of a blueprint course, can you change the navigational elements in the left-hand side? Yes, this is where you start. So right now, there's a lot that's just by default enabled along that left-hand nav. And in most cases, it's probably not needed, but teachers don't always go through and curate that list to be the most effective. But um, this is not lockable by the administrative, uh, administrative body. So a teacher in the classroom can change this. Um, let's take a quick pause on the questions. Let's move through a little bit more of the demo and we'll make sure we save enough time for questions at the end. Just because I want to make sure you guys get all the goodness of the features here. You guys liking it so far? Does this seem useful? Okay. <laughs> yeah, blueprint courses don't work without internet, just so you know. Okay. So I'm going to pretend here that uh, the rest of this content is, I'm, I'm not going to lock it. I'm going to allow my teachers to go ahead and modify this as much as they want, uh, you know, like the about your teacher. I'm obviously, it's not going to be the same teacher in every single classroom. Um, the teacher's going to have to edit that. I'm not going to lock that. So I've got a good course structure here. What I'm going to do now is you notice this cool little slidey tray on the side. That's technical. Um, it's got, uh, this is only available in the Blueprint course once it's been enabled. And what this does is it tells me which, uh, which classroom level courses this Blueprint is associated to. I have UI in here where I can make those associations. I can also create those associations through the SIS import through an additional column that uh, will allow you to input the SIS ID of the Blueprint course, um, as well as through the APIs. So there are a lot of ways you can create the, these associations. Um, we'll get into this association screen in just a second. Sync history, so every time I deploy a change, it's gonna keep track and keep record. And then unsync changes, so changes I've made inside of this blueprint course that I still need to distribute. Um, it's gonna tell me what those are. And then I've got a couple of options here where I can include the course settings. It automatically does this the first time I sync to a, a, an empty course shell or a new association. Um, but after that, it doesn't. I, I'm assuming that teachers are gonna mess with the nav a little bit. I don't wanna overwrite that every time unless it's getting out of control and I need to reel my teachers back in. I'm sure that never happens. Okay. Um, I also can choose to send notification. If I'm just making a spelling correction, I'm not gonna send a notification to all of my teachers uh, and freak them out about some change in the course. But um, if it's, hey, I changed one of the quizzes in week two, um, you should probably know that. And I can add a tweet length message that gives a quick summary of what I've changed so they don't need to really dig any deeper. This goes to their notification preference um, delivery mechanism, whether it's through email or through text or whatever, and they'll get that notification of those changes. So, I am going to, I've got a few changes that I'm gonna sync out, and well, I'm gonna automatically sync those. I'm gonna look at my associations for a second. I currently have one uh, classroom level course associated. I'm gonna add a couple of more here that, oops, let's see. Okay, I created a couple blank classroom shells here. If you notice, there is nothing in them. I've got classroom one and classroom two. You'll notice the left-hand nav, the defaults are still intact. And I'm magically going to change that first time user experience of my teachers and students through central, central distribution. So this is telling me I've got unsync changes and that since I've already got a course that's associated, it's also going to receive those unsync changes. I'm cool with that, I'm gonna say yes. So, now all of these courses are associated. I exit out of here and if I go into classroom one, well let me see, is it done? I'm on the slowness of the phone internet so I gotta wait a second. But this is real time, and uh, what this is doing that's a little bit different than uh, course copy in the past, this is not copying everything other than on the initial sync. 
So for the course that I've already got associated, it's just getting those three objects that I've updated. It's not gonna replace everything else. It's pretty smart about checking that and replacing what's necessary. So the, the question is, can I associate an entire sub-account? Is that, is that what I'm hearing? So my liberal arts sub-account, can I push this to all of them at once? Unfortunately not, not, not that direct. It's, it's course by course, so I could take all of the course shells within that through my SI, SIS import process and say, this is your SIS ID for your Blueprint course. It will automatically create that first sync and copy things over for me. All right, the sync is done. I'm just gonna refresh in this classroom level, or in this Classroom number one. Oh my gosh, that's so magical and amazing, right? <laughs> so the images are slow over the phone, but you'll notice my left-hand navigational elements are intact the way that I set them up uh, from the Blueprint course. Question here. Yeah, so the question is, um, on the first sync, the settings come over, and the question is, uh, if there are changes in the settings area of the Blueprint course after that, and I process a synchronization, do those bring, are those carried over into the associated courses? Uh, they're not by default, but um, if I make a change, I'm gonna have to make a change real quick, hold on. So I go into this overview and I go into edit. And I'm gonna say edited, okay, and save that. Now, I, I once again have the option to push out synchronizations. So I can include course settings in subsequent um, synchronizations. So if, if I do have some changes within the settings that I need to redistribute, I do have the opportunity to do that. That's also available through the API. So if I've got some other process, I can uh, tag it through the API to include those settings. Um, question there, can you make it so course settings never get pushed out? You can through the API. You can't through the UI, which, I mean, I suspect that as people are playing with this and, and discovering how this is gonna impact their institution, they'll use the, UI, but the, the UI for that. But after that, I suspect it's mostly gonna be through SIS and API, um, which you do have that option. One more question over here. Uh-huh. Okay, so the question is, um, do the settings come over just the first time I run any sync on any courses? So if I've already got courses that are underway and I've added new associations, say for the next semester or, or whatever, um, are those settings gonna go out to all of those associations or just the new ones? It's just the, the new associations. The first time that association is created on that new associated course. Um, is when that's gonna take place. Although I will say, probably as a best practice, I would probably use a blueprint course for each section, or, you know, each, uh, each semester, and break that up so that um, I can keep those courses intact the way that they were during that session, and then for the next semester, those ones have their own blueprint. You don't have to do it that way, there's a lot of ways you can, you can uh, play around with that. Um, all right, what else should we cover here? Um, okay, so I've edited this piece of content. Um, this is the class overview. You remember that it is unlocked. So I'm gonna go into classroom one. I'm gonna go into my modules and find that, uh, what was it, the class overview? I'm gonna make a change to this real quick.
So this is a classroom level change of this unlocked learning object. Um, I have not made that, I have not refreshed this yet. Let me go over to the modules page. In classroom two, you'll see that it's unchanged here and changed in this class. So if I go back to my modules view, you'll notice the title of classroom change. And I've edited this from the Blueprint course side. So I'm gonna redistribute this or resync this. I'm not gonna include those settings. I'm gonna run a sync. Back to the question that we got earlier, is this gonna overwrite the changes that I've made inside of my classroom level course? Oh, that's done already. Okay, here we go. Um, so I'm gonna refresh here in the one that I did change. Look at that, no change. And here, in the one that I did not edit. Oh my gosh, I got the edit. That's so cool. So midstream inside of a, a course that's ongoing, if there is a change, you know, we've switched curriculum providers and, or uh, um, maybe publishers and content and we forgot to switch something out, I can go make those edits real time, redistribute those without disrupting everybody and making them jump through hoops, all my teachers in the classroom right here. Okay, so the question is, the individual objects inside the modules, there is a blueprint icon. What about the module itself? Modules are not um, lockable, um, and uh, they can be managed inside the classroom level. So they will operate independently after they're pushed over that first time. Yeah, teachers can absolutely add their own content in here. Um, we don't have restrictions around that, so um, they would add an object in here, it just simply would not have that blueprint icon next to it, which indicates to the teachers that, hey, this is something I control, this is something I can edit, um, I've got full permissions over this thing. A lot of hands here, right here. The question is, if I've got images or uh, documents in the original, are they being copied over or just being linked to? Is that the question? Um, they're being copied over. This is a, a full copy. This course operates independent. If that association is ever severed, those icons just disappear. Those objects remain intact. All right here. Can you merge two blueprint courses together? Not through the, uh, well, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's not quite as magical. I mean, you would, uh, you'd have to, you can only have one association at a time. So this is, and you can't waterfall this, right? So I can associate the blueprint to as many courses as I want at one time, but I can't have that blueprint course also receiving blueprint from another blueprint course. Does that make sense? It's not cascading. Technically we could do that, but that would be a tremendous nightmare to manage and maintain, both at the institutional level and at, at an instructor. You'd kill our customer service people with that one. <laughs> the yes, they can unpack that out of a module. So. Just the object itself is locked. They cannot make edits to that. They cannot delete that, but they can move it around inside the module structure. They can move it out of the modules altogether, just like they, you can today. You can have something published and not in a module. Um, you know, we can't control all the people problems that go on <laughs> at the school. <laughs> but they can choose for it to be unpublished. No, they cannot choose for it to be unpublished. Yeah. It's just whether or not it's in the module versus being included in the Correct. Back here, real quick, sorry. Sorry, what was that? Can it be done at the instructor level? So an instructor can manage multiple sections of the same course. For example, if they're running each section as an individual course and not using sections within a course. Absolutely, as long as they've got the permission set to do that. So you need to have your admin say, 
hey, we need the teacher role to include permission, uh, the permission for blueprint courses, or create a new, unique role of teachers that have that permission be added to that role. Does that make sense? Uh huh. So the question there is, um, there's a bunch of permissions that we would need to enable for a teacher that we may not necessarily want them to have uh, in order to use Blueprint. You can always invite them to their Blueprint course as a teacher. Uh, they can do the sync. They can't, they can't manage the association, so you'd have to set that up for them, but they can control the Blueprint itself and distribute as much as they want within that. Um, we are pretty much out of time here. I will hang around the back and answer as many questions as you guys want for as long as you want, I promise. Thanks, you guys.